What's going on guys, it's Matt back with another video. Today we're talking about the Canon FD 50mm f1.4, which I'm using to film this segment of the video. I have my monitor on focus peaking so I can shoot at f1.4 and still be in focus. This is probably the best vintage lens that I've ever shot, 50mm or not. I don't have a huge uh, scope of experience in vintage lenses, but this one really stands out for a lot of reasons. But we'll get into that later in the image quality segment. First, let's start off with the physical aspects of this lens so you know what it's like to handle. Then we'll get into the image quality later. Let's do it. So now we're on to the physical aspects of this lens. As you can see, I've been shooting it on my Fujifilm X-T30 that for some reason no one wants to buy, even though I've been trying to sell it. But that's besides the point. We're talking about the lens here. We'll just take it off the camera here for a second so I can show you. Um, I've been, I had these step up rings on it right now, so I have been able to put this lens cap on it, um, but they also kind of double as a, as a lens hood, and uh, this lens is pretty prone to flare as it is a vintage lens, so um, that has been pretty nice actually for preventing flares in a lot of situations at least. It's a very lightweight lens, here I'll even take it off the adapter, we'll do this once because it's a little bit of a complicated system, more complicated than most, we have to make sure that's on open instead of lock. We hit this button and twist it off there. As you can see, there's like a series of levers on the rear mount of this, the Canon FD mount. Notoriously a little bit more on the complex side um, to allow for, you know, automatic aperture systems and stuff like that in the, in the film cameras. I can't open or close the aperture without the adapter. Um, because obviously I'm shooting uh, this uh, with the Canon FD at a Fujifilm FX adapter. So that's the lens in its original size. I'll put it back on the adapter here. The aperture blades are pretty round up until f2.8, the aperture opening, and then it becomes a little bit more polygonal. The thing about this lens, I don't know if you're going to be able to really see this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to position that light so you're going to be able to see it. There's, uh, there's like a little tiny bug in one of the elements. I have some pictures where you can see a, a dot in all the bokeh. Anyway, it's a, it's a very light lens compared to a lot of vintage lenses because it's actually made of mostly plastic. The only metal thing here is this uh, adapter at the, at the back. But um, yeah, very plasticky. The aperture is plastic. The focus ring, the whole body of it is plastic. But, you know, to be fair, pretty high grade plastics. They're, you know, the aperture ring is one of my least favorites. They're half stops in between the stops, which is not common. A lot of vintage lenses are just full stops, um, but they're not very, there's not a lot of space between them. So it just kind of feels a little crappy bumping through the apertures in my opinion, but that's kind of a snobby picky thing to, I, I like the feel of the lens as well, but, uh, but to be fair, the focus ring is, is pretty, it's fairly smooth on this, so that's it. It gets a pass. It's it's not not fun to shoot with. It's just a little plasticky. But you know, in a way, that's a bonus if you're shooting in the cold a lot. Then your lens isn't like too cold to touch because it doesn't. You know, the metal gets real real cold. So that is all for the build quality and physical aspects of this lens. Let's get on to the image quality, which is really the most important part. So in terms of image quality for this lens, it's super, super sharp for a vintage lens, even wide open at f1.4. It's like the sharpness at 1.4 for this lens is unheard of for a vintage lens. Now, you do have to take into consideration that this is a vintage lens from the 80s. I'll try to get an exact year I don't, I obviously didn't do my research for this, but whatever. <laughs> and a lot of vintage lenses that I shoot otherwise are from the 60s. So that could be a big reason why it stands out, especially from my other vintage lenses that I've shot. It's because there's 20 years of lens design and innovation in between. This is super sharp at 1.4. It's amazingly sharp. It's just like any modern lens. If you stop it down, if you're shooting like a landscape with it at F8, sharp throughout the frame. I am shooting it on a crop sensor. Fujifilm X-T3, or sometimes I've shot it on my X-E1. So I'm using it on APS-C size sensors. Maybe I'm cropping out the softer outer edges of the image circle that you might see in a full frame camera. A big thing that jumps out to me about this Canon FD 50 millimeter is that the colors are just organic and just pleasing. It's, it's a really hard quality to describe or put your finger on why you like it, but there's just something about the colors. There, it just, it's subtle, but it's just really, really nice. It's a different signature than Fujifilm colors, I think. And it work, It plays really well with the Fujifilm film simulations that I always put on my RAW files. It just, it's very nice, especially in just like Provia, super subtle, super 
Like I said, I can't even come up with the words to describe why I like it, but I like it. <laughs> the bokeh is very nice. It's soft. It's not distracting. There's not really any harsh spots, but it's not clinically perfectly soft like some like, for example, my Fujifilm 33mm f1.4, the bokeh is completely non-distracting. There's no character to it. It's soft, it's perfectly round, it's perfectly creamy, there's no, um, like, harsh distractions in how it renders things, but it doesn't stand out. Like, it, it doesn't capture your, your attention, which sometimes can be good if you just want have to have that modern clinical professional look but this canon fd it, it it's close to that it's like it's like the 80s they're getting the lens design it's getting a lot better than it was in like the 60s or whatever like i was just talking about but they haven't quite ironed out every single imperfection there's a little bit of chromatic aberration there's just a slight more amount of harshness in the in the bokeh especially if you compare it directly to a modern lens at f1.4 or f2 or whatever but it just, it's just nice. It's that happy medium where it's, it's nice, it's non-distracting, but it's not clinically perfect and soft and non-characteristic, if that makes sense. In some situations, especially if you have a lot of point light sources, there is a soap bubble bokeh effect. It's not always there, but in certain situations, it's definitely there. It also has sun stars, pretty nice sun stars as you stop down. I think there's eight aperture blades, and so you have eight point sun stars. You have one for each aperture blade. So as I've been saying with all of these image quality things, it basically renders like a modern lens. It's super sharp. The colors are nice. Uh, the bokeh is very pleasing. It's not harsh or distracting at almost any point. The only thing that really is a giveaway is like the bokeh is not completely like a modern lens and also that it flares kind of easily. Like I showed on the physical aspects, me having the step up ring so I can put the lens cap on, uh, that works kind of like a, a lens hood, but this lens would really benefit from a screw, an actual screw-in lens hood just because you get the, the haze and washed out effect from the sun just being right out of frame or sometimes a bright light source at night. But it's not as bad as a lot of vintage lenses, but that is one of the, the giveaways that it is not a super, super modern lens. <laughs> the last thing I have written down in my notes for image quality is that just on this particular lens, there is a dot in a lot of the bokeh because of the little bug in between the image elements. Uh, so that is just with this particular lens. If you have a big thing in between image elements, you're gonna see that in every single bokeh ball. But that's it. Um, I generally really enjoy using this lens. I probably like shooting with this Canon FD more than I would enjoy shooting with like a modern manual focus lens, like a TT Artisan, Seven Artisans, because they're like they're like the cheap brands and this was the professional quality back in the 80s and it just strikes the right balance with me the colors are nice it's just it takes beautiful images i like the intentionality of shooting manual focus this hits a lot of things for me um I just wish it was, I don't know, I guess I like that it's light, so I, I'm me wishing that it was a metal lens It kind of goes against me liking certain parts <laughs> that I like about it. So it is probably one of my top recommended vintage lenses. If you're just going to buy one or you aren't interested in having a whole collection like I'm starting to get. <laughs> so yeah, if you find one of these at a thrift store, if you find a good price online, I definitely recommend grabbing it. Thank you so much to Frank Artali. Um, he sent me this lens, so he has sent me some stuff in the past, like my Fuji from XE1. I'll eventually do a video on that. And uh, so I, he sent me an X100 and a whole bunch of different things. So thank you so much, Frank. Thanks for lending me this. I've, he's let me have it for months on end to have the time to properly shoot with it and review it and get lots of good image examples. Thank you so much, Frank. Shout out to you. Leave a con comment down below so everyone else can thank you as well. And uh, so yeah, thank you so much for that opportunity, Frank. He even offered to let me keep it because he liked some of the stuff that I was doing with it. And I just like, he's done so much and he's sent, he sent me so much. He's done a lot for me. I, I felt bad about accepting. I was like, no, Frank, you don't need to let me keep this lens. I'll send it back, don't worry. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I do regret it a little bit the more I shoot with it because I like it so much, I'm gonna have to go buy my own <laughs> now. But uh, thank you for that opportunity, Frank. Um, I'm going to stop rambling now. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below, guys. Do you want to see more vintage lens reviews? Do you want me to focus more on modern lenses? Do you want me to not do as many reviews? Because I've tried the tips and tricks videos. I think you guys like those videos, but they don't reach the broader audience. That's more for you guys that are already here. 
it's not reaching a ton of people outside of who's already subscribed. Let me know if it, what you want to see in the future because I'm, like I said uh, in a previous video, I'm doing a lot on this channel in the near future. So I'm excited to do a lot this year and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.